Create your own inspections, audits and checklist webinar. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at inspections and audits from two perspectives. We're going to look at it from the perspective of the person who creates the audit and then from the perspective of the person who uses it uh, either on the laptop or using a phone. So to start with, what we're looking at right at the moment is a list of all of the inspection templates and audit templates that we've created. And these are, if you're doing this manually, this would be something similar to what you've got on an Excel spreadsheet. It's simply a list of sections with questions inside those sections that you then go around and tick as, as you do your inspection. And what you want to do is we want to put those into MIOSH so that you no longer have that manual uh, aspect to your work. What we've got, if we go and have a look at one of these templates, let's say the light vehicle inspection, is a series of sections. And into these sections, we can have any number of questions. You can have any number of sections as well. So we'll just put this into edit mode. And I'll show you here how easy it is for you to add new information into this. So the idea behind this is that you configure your own inspections, your own questions. You don't come back to us in order to do this. If, on the other hand, you do have a lot of these and you want us to do it, we do have something called MIOSH Assistant. It's effectively a low-cost option where we can take your inspections and add them in for you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add a new section. So what I do is up here in the, the type section, I choose what it is I want to add and I'll choose a section title. And what we can do, I've got a whole bunch of sections here. I'll just call this section other and click add. Now that adds it to the bottom of the current inspection or audit. What I need to do now is I need to add maybe a question in here. So let's do that. Let's say we're, we're doing a, a light vehicle audit. So let's put in a question, is the vehicle sun damaged? What we've then got are some answers. So the, the answer might be, it might be yes. And what score do we add for yes? Well, if it's sun damage, that's obviously not a good thing. So what we might do is we might give that a score of zero. Then we've got, no, it's not. Well, that's ideal. So maybe we'll give this a score of five. And as you can see, you can add in whatever scoring you like. It's entirely up to you. There might be uh, a little. And a little is not great, but it's also not really bad. So we'll give you a score of two. And you can add as many answers as you like in here. Down below, what you can also say is, when I come to answer this question, do I want to put in an observation? Do I want to be able to log actions against this answer or this question? Do I want to connect to any hazards? Maybe add in some attachments. And when I click Add, what it does is it adds that question into the section title at the bottom. Now, again, we can add in as many questions as we want, but I'm not going to do that. What I'll do now is I'll add in a section total. And what the section total does, here's a section total here. What this does is it sums the total score for all of the questions in the section that you're currently looking at. So we need one of those. We'll add in a section total. And down at the bottom, we've now got a section title, a series of questions, and a total. Note, however, that there's also a grand total. And the grand total sums the scores of all of the section totals. And clearly, at the moment, this particular section is outside of the grand total. So to get it inside, you simply push it up there. You drag questions, the sections, the section total, and you put them inside the grand total. And you can move things around in any way that you like within this questionnaire. And once you've completed it, you submit the document. Now, once you've got all of these templates available to you, you can then create inspections or audits from them. If we just have a quick shoot back in here, notice that there is, in fact, a status associated with this particular inspection template. And currently, it's active. So what you can do while you're creating these, because sometimes they do take a while, 
is you can set them to draft mode. And this means that they are not available for anybody to use until such time as you make them active. Once active, you can see the text down the left-hand side. And any of these are now available to become inspections that people can use. So how do you use them? Well, there are different ways to go about this. First and foremost, you can use this on a laptop, the way I'm going to use it. But you can also use it on a tablet. Now, there are some organizations whose main business is manufacturing. Uh, they're never very far away from the internet. In these cases, probably not much point in using the app. What you can do is you can simply grab a tablet, use the URL at the top, put it onto your tablet, and put this as a website that you want to go to regularly, a favorite, click on the link, and you can go there, just like I am here. Once in, you click on inspections, it takes you to the inspections module, and you can do exactly the same as I'm doing here. So if we go back into inspections and we have a look at this, what we can do is we can actually create an inspection from our tablet. You click on new record, choose a person who's accountable, choose the type of inspection that you want, let's say a loss prevention inspection, choose the time, and down the bottom what we've got are two buttons. There's continue and complete now, or there's schedule and send notification. Schedule effectively means let's not do it now, send it out to the person and they can do it when you've scheduled it. Now that will send it out to a person's mobile device. Complete now, if we were doing this on a tablet, what it does is it pulls in all of the questions that came from our templates and it enables us on our tablet to start doing the inspection, put in our observations. And of course, these observations and these answers are only available because that's what we did. That's how we set it up in the template that I showed you earlier. And if you remember, there was the ability to create an action, create an, a hazard and add an attachment. These are all optional and you can assign these to each question in each inspection. Let's have a look at scheduling them. You can schedule them when you create them as I just showed you. But what you can also do is you can set up a repeating schedule. So I could say, right, we want to do an annual site audit. We want to start at the end of the month. And because it's annual, we want to do it annually. Put in some comments, assign it to somebody, press submit. And what will happen is that this is now an annual schedule. John Constable, in this instance, is going to, on an annual basis, get a notification to do their their site audit. And they'll be able to do this by phone, by tablet, or on the laptop. So let's have a look now at what we do when we do this on a phone. Now the app itself has a number of options, inspections being just one of them. From the main menu, you can click on inspections. What this does is it shows you the inspections that you have been assigned. So if someone had sent an inspection to you, with your name as the person responsible for it, you would get an email, but what you also get, if you've got the app, is a notification with a list of all of the things that have been assigned to you. If we go back to the main menu and you click on My Activities, which is at the top, this shows you not only your inspections, but other things. And you can see down at the bottom, I've got a couple of actions as well. So if we were to click on one of these inspections, the light vehicle audit, what we've got is some basic details. Now, this is preloaded because we've sent it to you. We know who you are. You've logged in, and it, it knows that you work at a particular site. It knows what date you're doing this, the time you're doing it. It knows the status that it's currently in, and it knows your name. What you've then got is a series of questions from the template that you actually created. And what you're able to do now is answer these questions using the buttons. Now, the buttons have been configured as colors and you can configure the colors. If you remember in the example I created, there was a yes, no, and a little bit. Now you could make the little bit a yellow because it's not quite red and it's not quite green. What it means is that if you were doing a very large audit, say a 4801 audit, uh, something that was potentially too large for you to complete within one day, you could save this or submit it halfway through, come back into it and continue. 
And as you scroll through some of these questions, it's easy to see which questions have been answered in a non-conforming manner because you've decided that they should be colored red. Again, as you can see, there's the opportunity to add in an observation. For each question, what you can do is you can take a photograph. You can take several photographs or you can select photographs from your gallery. If we scroll through a little bit, I've got a question here, is the painting good condition? The answer is no. So what I've done is I've taken a photograph of the paint. And what I'm able to do as well is I'm able to click on a linked action for every question. So in this instance, if I wanted to fire off an action to somebody from inside my inspection, I can click on log new. This is the action that I could, I could complete. Uh, I'm going to spare you my typing details and, and not do this. Uh, actions in itself is, a, is probably another 20 minute production, similar to what we're doing at the moment. But you can create these actions and they will automatically be sent out. The nice thing about the app as well is that if you are in an area where there is no internet connectivity, it will store the information that you've submitted on the app. And when you get back into an area where there is internet connectivity and come back into the Myosh app, what it will do is it will send out the notification. If we then have a look as we scroll through at some of the things we've got in here, the ability to take a photograph, the ability to log actions, complete as many questions as you've got in the template, you can see that this is a really, a really, really powerful tool. Once it's submitted, a notification will go back to someone at the home base and they will be able to review what you've put into your inspection. Now, one of the things that we've just added, it's, it's not available yet, but it's coming soon. And it's something that is applicable to not just inspections, is at the bottom, we have the ability to put in geolocation information. So we can, if you're happening to be doing an inspection on a piece of equipment in a particular place, you can click on get current location and it just gets the location for you. The other thing that you can also do is you can sign off your inspection. Now you don't have to do this because you're logged in. It is a digital signature. It knows who you are, but it's a nice touch. And this is something that's going to get added to a new app that's coming out for the Safe Work Method Statements where signatures are important. So these sorts of things can be added to any module that happens to be part of the app. So once we submit, we need to know what happens and what you see when you review it on the laptop. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at this light vehicle audit that we were just reviewing. So what's happened is people have answered this. You can see their answers over here and you can see the scores that they got for their answers. And you can see also that the section scores are here as well. So for every section that there is, for every answer given, Myosh totals those answers. And as you can see, here are the photographs that were taken on the phone. If we go and have a look at something a little more complex than this one, let's say the 4801 audit. This one is a huge audit and it has an enormous amount of questions. And as we scroll through, you can see each section has been totaled up. And as we scroll towards the bottom, you can see also that what you get is a total score for the entire audit or inspection and a percentage score. Now, if you're a person who is reviewing this and you wanted to see what percentage score had been received in each section of this particular inspection, you could, if you wanted to, scroll through the entire inspection. But it's a long way to go about it if you're looking at something as complex as a 4801 audit. So to assist you in that respect what there is is a graph and if you click on the graph what the graph does is it shows you which aspects of the audit you've done well at and which not so well so this enables you to at least see how you've performed without necessarily going into the entire audit and reviewing it lastly but not least what you've got is a calendar the calendar enables you to see what inspections have been set up for the coming month and if you're managing this and you want to see what's going on you simply click on the link and open the inspection there's also a ubiquitous search report now search reports everywhere they work in the same way they enable you to extract information from any module that you happen to be in it's an ad hoc reporting tool and if we go in and we have a look what i want to see is inspections that uh, have com been completed over a particular period of time and when I submit this document what it does is it extracts information from the inspections currently available and puts it into a spreadsheet. Now in this case there's nothing there 
but I could run any of these. So I've got uh, an open 4801 audit. This is saying, show me all of the 4801 audits currently open in a particular site. And if I submit this one, so I've got two. And what it's telling me here is what the score was for these audits. And if I want to go and find out how we did in those, I click on the link and actually open the audit. So that's a, a powerful ad hoc reporting tool that for those of you who were reviewing the training management webinar, you probably saw that too. It's available everywhere, works in exactly the same way. The first question is from Kana, and she asks, uh, can you link to an existing hazard or only create a new hazard report? Within the current version, as I've shown you now, you can only create a new one. But if you're looking at the customizable version of the product, we could certainly make that happen, simply because it's a customizable version. If you're looking at the classic version, I would have to... I would have to go and talk to the developers to see whether or not we were capable of doing that. I suspect that we will be able to do it. Okay. Bearing in mind that custom is, it's customizable on a per client basis, so not everybody would want that sort of functionality. Certainly we can do it. Okay. Is there an option to have a daily inspection happening? And that's yes, the, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. So, so when you when you click on active scheduled inspections, just because I've got weekly, fortnightly here, doesn't mean that we can't add daily to this. Okay, is that something that we need to contact support about if you don't have that it's, option? Look, it's, it's something that we would simply have to add into the repeating frequency of the inspections. We don't ah. do it that often because if you have a lot of daily inspections, you can imagine that your active inspections list is going to be massive. But okay. if it's something that is required, yes, we can do that. Okay. All right. Well, that came from Mark. Uh, Tom asks, I think you answered this, but um, can we include signatures in the inspection on mobile devices and how do I set this up in templates? Uh, the answer is yes, you can. It's uh, something that's already available. It just hasn't been deployed yet. We expect it to be deployed next month. Okay. Mark has also said, on the app, how does the inspection save halfway through so you can go back to it? You just submit it and it saves it and then you open it again. Okay, very good. Mark has asked, when you want to schedule an inspection for someone to complete, um, e.g. department manager, for a monthly inspection, what access level does that person need to have to be chosen as the accountable person? A minimum of power. So anybody with basic user access probably will not be able to do this, although, again, in a customizable environment, we can set it so that people with user access can do it. Okay. Tom may have missed this part, but how do you set up the colors for different answers? If we go into the active templates and we, let's go back to the sample, the example that I gave you. If you open up the question and click on a question, what you've got is the ability here to choose the colours. Very nice. Craig has said that his app doesn't allow to add a photo for each question and doesn't have the functionality to link an action. Might just be that he's got an older version of the app. We can certainly look into that. Yeah. Can you email um, support, please, Craig, and we'll sort that out. Mark has said, can you show graph information on the dashboard? Look, on the dashboard, there are widgets that apply to inspections. There are a couple of them, I know. We've got an inspections table, a pie chart. In fact, we've got a few. Now, you just have to play around with these to see whether or not any of them gives you the information that you want. And if it doesn't, and you have some specific requirements, you can send those to them, and we can probably build you one that does. Okay. Chris has asked, um, can the calendar link with Outlook? I guess, again, this depends on whether or not you're a custom or a classic client. Something that is more a question for a developer than for me, from a custom point of view, yes, because it's customizable. If, if it's a classic environment, I would have to find out. Think of anything technically, why not? But there is some work that would need to be done. 
Okay, we will have an explore that question. Uh, Stephanie has said that she has the Myosh old interface. How do we upgrade to the newer version? Stephanie, I believe you just have to contact support. Is that correct, Nigel? Yes, it is. Now, if you've got the old version and you have, you're in custom, I think, custom, you, you'd probably be in custom because older mm. customers have that. What you'll find is that your older inspections are not going to, you'll be able to keep them, but you actually, they, they won't be able to be transferred into the new uh, format because the, the new version of inspections is completely different. So what you would have to do is potentially create your current templates in the old version, recreate them in the new. And you might have to have two versions of the inspections module, one sort of as a, an archive list of inspections and the new one to create any of the the new inspections to get this functionality. Okay. Hilary has said, can these be set with traffic lights the same as contractor management? Yes. I Look, it's not at the moment. Uh, I think what she's referring to is when you open up an audit and you look down the scoring here, could there be a column that shows you uh, a traffic light color depending on how they've answered the question and I think the answer is yes we could do this so we could have the color associated with the button that's actually on the uh, mobile app showing up as a th uh, as a column down here but again it's it's not something that's there at the moment uh, but certainly we could add it okay uh, Allegra has asked is the functionality demonstrated the same for classic Almost entirely. I can't think of anything I've told you at the moment that's not available in Classic. Okay. Rosita has asked, is it automatically possible to have a prompt for actions when an audit reflects a zero result? Again, custom, yes. Classic, no. Now, I don't know whether or not you're talking about from inside the app itself. That might be a lot more uh, complex. Again, I would have to go and visit the developers to find out whether or not that's possible. Classic, I would say probably not because the design of Classic affects absolutely everybody and unless everybody wants it, uh, we can't do it. Whereas with custom, we can pretty much do anything that you want. Okay. Danae says, ask, can you have free text fields for answers instead of yes or no options? Yes, we can. That just depends on how you can conf you configure these. So, if we go into a template again on Edit, and we click on, we can add text up here, and we can add option fields as well. So, you have uh, radio or check boxes, or you can put in free text. Okay. Okay, Stephanie says we, we currently have one module for inspections and audits. Is it possible to split these up and have one audit module and one inspection module? Typically, a lot of larger organisations, the, the nomenclature within um, inspections and audits is different. And instead of creating an inspection and audits module that just says inspections up here, a lot of organisations want to have their, their 4801 audits and every other audit in, an, in a module that says audits and comes with whatever auditing terminology uh, it requires. And it, it would be exactly that, a carbon copy, but just with the wording changed. Mark has said something interesting. If other companies want customizable options, can the cost be shared between these companies that want the change? Could Myash set up a forum for others to discuss customizable options? I think the idea of a forum has been brought up before, and obviously we rely on feedback for everything anyway. So it, I think, Nigel, when, when a lot of people are requesting the same thing, we generally make the change if it's feasible. Doesn't that happen? Yes. Typically what we do is if, if an organisation wants a particular change that is effect, that affects only that organisation, we have to say, well, look, all right, we'll build it in for you, but we've got to charge you. If an organisation comes to us with a really good idea that we think is applicable to more than just them, we, we often say, all right, well, you know, if it's going to take 10 hours to do it, we'll sponsor five or six hours and it'll cost you four. I can't see a reason why not, why they're 
couldn't be something if a couple of organisations came to us and said, these are the changes we want to make and can we share the cost? I, I see absolutely no reason for us not doing that. It's just that we haven't done it before. Exactly how we'd go about it, I have no idea, but um, yeah, it would just be cost sharing. It's one of our plans to have a forum, a sort of member-only forum somewhere. So we, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, in the meantime, obviously, email is the best way. Allegra has asked, I'm wondering if I can use the trial version of Classic Inspector to see what functionality it has before I commit from the questions. It seems there will yes, be some items. Can. Anyone who, wants, who currently has Classic and wants to trial any module, what we'll do is we will put in a sort of down the bottom, we'll put a section of test modules, if you like, and you can play around with it for a month and see if you like it. At the end of the month, if you've put some information in there that is valid and you want to keep it, well, we just move it up into a, an area that's appropriate and you start paying for it. If you don't want it, we remove it and no right. harm done. Okay. So, Allegra, again, please um, email support if you want one of those trial versions. Craig has said, is the overall Myosh interface we are looking at on Nigel's screen, is it the classic version? Can this interface be transferred to a custom version? No, this is the custom version that we're looking at. Okay. Mark says, can you archive old inspections so you don't have a large list to view? I know you can use filters, but it still might be a nice feature. What happens is that when you create inspections that are active, by default, you look at active inspections. And this is the same with any module. You look at whatever's active. Once you've completed them and set the status to completed, they drop away and they fall into all inspections. Now, there used to be in the old version an archive option because what you wanted to do was exactly that, not see everything all in one view. But now that we've got this, what you're able to do is you're able to filter on these views. So if all you want to see is the, the open ones, it will just show you only the open ones and you can hide the closed ones. So the view in itself has now become functional. It has ability. And while I'm here, it's worth noting that what you're able to do with these views is play around with the data. So as well as filtering out things that you don't want to see, you can also order things, or, you know, like data order up or down if you like. It depends on you. And you can drag columns around into any order that you want. So I could take the accountable person and put that column first. And I can, I can do other interesting things, like I could export this column to a report. So if I click on export and click PDF, what it will do is it will just drop that into a PDF document for me. So there's a lot of functionality that's available in the actual view itself to enable you to hide these things. In terms of is there actually an archive element to it, no, there isn't. But if you wanted it, we could put in an archive option and then there would have to be an archive inspection up here. There is an archive templates. So with templates, it's a little different because you may have 30, 40 inspection templates that you've used over time that eventually fall out of use. And maybe you don't want to just delete them because an awful lot of work went into them. So these you can archive, select archive over here. And that means you can bring them back at a later stage. One thing that I might mention, it might not be right, but I thought, I've had a couple of clients tell me that you can use the voice to text in the observations on the mobile. Yes, you can. So I tried it and it did work quite well. Yes. So th what this is quite useful for is if you're like me and completely hopeless when it comes to actually typing anything on a phone, I don't know how uh, this works on an Android, but I'm pretty sure it's fairly similar to what happens on an iPhone. Down at the bottom, in the bottom row, third from the left, there's a microphone. If you click on the microphone and you happen to be in something like the observations uh, field, you can then just talk into the phone. Uh, from my experience, you if you speak very fast, not a good idea. So if you space your words out, it will pick these up quite well. You can even put in things. You can speak a sentence and say the word full stop, new line, and it will follow those instructions as well. It's, it's not too bad at all. And it, it's a lot better than typing if you're not very good at it. Yeah, okay. And uh, one more thing. Tracy says, can you show the radio buttons and how they are used in an inspection check sheet? In this case, what you'll do is you'll create uh, your question or your option. And what you've got to do here is tick or create a new line for each radio button or checkbox option. What is broken? Aerial 
bumper, wheels, roof, everything. So effectively, what you're going to do here is you're creating anything you like with a series of options that will display either as a radio button or a checkbox. And a radio button will allow you to choose one, a checkbox will allow you, allow you to choose many. Any question that appears in MIOSH currently, this will appear just the same way. You have to submit this, then you have to create an inspection, send it out, then you can look at it on your phone or on the laptop. But it really is as simple as this to create it. Okay, Tom has actually said um, that if you use this option, there is no score. You're not creating a question and answering the question with a yes, no answer, giving an answer score to the yes, no. This is simply ticking something and there is no option to add or assign scores to each one of these. Okay, and we've answered Craig's question about the differences between radio buttons and checkbox. Radio, you can only pick one. Checkbox, you can pick one or more. And Tom said, can you show us how to clone inspections? I'm not sure if he means the inspections or the templates. Or both. Well, you can't clone an inspection, you can clone a template. Right, there you go. Again, this is quite a useful option because you may well have an inspection template that you've created that is made up of a number of questions and you've got something else that's very similar. It may have a few questions less, but what you don't obviously want to do is you don't want to go in there and recreate 90% of this particular inspection template just to change a few things. So there's a clone button up here and when you press clone, what it will do is it will enable you to create a completely new document which you can now change and call whatever you want and then you can delete any questions that are inappropriate or take out sections, whatever you like. So it's just a nice way of making sure that anything that is very similar doesn't have to be created laboriously from the very beginning again. Okay. Stephanie has just said, can we get some information about new upcoming modules, e.g. the SWIMS module, will these be made automatically available in test environment or do we need to request this? As far as I'm, what I would be doing, Stephanie, is there should be information on the login page. There's a little banner section there that would highlight any new modules and, of course, the emails and probably Facebook and everywhere else as well. Nigel, do you have anything to say about that? Swims is coming. Uh, look, I know it's being tested at the moment as well as a permit to work module. They've both spent quite a long time in development. I've been told by the programmers that they're going to be available in a couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, well, knowing programmers as I do, I would say four weeks. <laughs> uh, but, yes, they, the, the functionality is uh, reasonably complex. I know that in permit to work, for example, you are going to be able to create your own permits in very much the same way as you can create your own questionnaire in an inspection. So this kind of functionality is not just limited to the inspections module. It's something that we're going to be using a lot of, and if you understand how it works in inspections, you'll be able to use it in the other modules. And that'll be really nice when it comes to permits because uh, there won't be any hard coding. The creation of the permits will be entirely up to the customer. Okay. Anna has just said, do we have an S00 version of the site? They don't have a login page. Can't see any news. Anna, can you please email me? I'll send you the link. Make sure you're getting the email news. If you can email sarah.o'leary at marsh.com, I'll send you the link. There are no more questions, Nigel, but I think you've answered a lot. That was really good. So, sorry, SOO means single sign-on. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Okay, yeah, that's really good. Just one more quick question, Nigel. Uh, is it possible to send an inspection to a contractor that may not be a user but has the app? No, you have to have a login to get in. So, I mean, if the contractor is a licensed user, yes, they can use it just the same as anybody else, but you can't give access to somebody to use MIOSH if they don't have a license to use it. That said, if you're using the customized version, then things can be done to enable people to have anonymized login so that all they can do is log an inspection or create an inspection. Uh, typically, these, these types of people can also log incidents and log hazards, but they can't actually see what it is that they've done once they've logged it. But that's something that would need to be discussed on a per client basis and probably taken to a business requirements meeting because customized versions are so different. In terms of classic, I'm afraid that can't be done. 
Okay, well, we'll just about wrap it up. I, I would like to just um, encourage any feedback if possible so that we can we can be better. Um, also, any um, requests for particular modules, we have got a list of webinars to do, get through, but if you have got requests, that would be great. But any feedback would be good. And thank you very much, Nigel, 